like it. It sounds like it? Yeah. <laughs>
has no abilities to return void. So if your ears haven't opened yet, they're going to pop. If your heart's not right, it's going to get right. Yep. Whatever the situation is, you know. And we've already had some healing in this place. I, I know it. And you know it. Raise your hand. God touched you. All right. So the scripture he uses to, to turn, turn it around is, is in uh, Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. If you put that up there. Come unto me, all, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you that. For my yoke is easy. I skip the verse, I know. But my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it's not hard for the word to work. It's easy for the word to restore your mind. Yes. It's easy for God to do a miracle. It's not difficult. That's right. The difficult part is you letting it through your brain. Exactly. And you letting it in your body. And you letting it in your soul. But I'm telling you, it affected my back that day. And nobody touched me. Mm -hmm. And when Johnny got done, I went up there and I told him, I said, while you were preaching, I got healed. Mm -hmm. He said, Amen. And it was several weeks later, remember Fred Price, mm -hmm. who's going on to be with the Lord now? He was he was teaching on this very subject of healing with the whole man. And he said, You know, uh, when he got done, he said, Some of you have been healed while I was preaching. And they started raising their hand all over that congregation. And maybe a hundred out of a thousand, you know, or two thousand, got healed while he was preaching. So let the word do its work. Yep. See, open your heart to the word. Yes, yes. Open your heart to the word of God. Just, yes. just tell them, Lord, I'm opening my heart to your word. Okay? And your word is going to touch me. Even before Pastor Phil laid his hands on See, there's still fire in this place. Now, Proverbs 4.18. But the path of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So he's going to keep shining that light on you through the scriptures. Through the scriptures. Through the Holy Spirit saying something to you that you've never heard before, but the Holy Spirit will talk to you. The Holy Spirit will plant something in you. He'll, or He'll tell you, keep trusting me, you know. Or He'll tell you, keep going. Don't stop now, you know. No, you, you can't give up on this thing. Praise God. When you get into it, you've got to keep going. Uh, Proverbs 4.20 My son, attend to my word and incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes and keep them in the midst of thine heart. So when you're all alone, you take those cards we got back yonder, or you take your Bible, or you take something on a recording, or you get on YouTube and you get Alexander Scorby. You know, he, he's an old fellow that has passed to be with the Lord, but he's got a good anointing. And he speaks the word of God. And it's, it's very clear. And it's, it's a good tone. All those things. You just let it play. Let it play. Kenneth Hagin had uh, some, some old ladies that uh, took up with his word. It wasn't his word, but, but, but he has shared some of it in the book. Um, and, and they, they uh, inherited a house from there from the parents, the two sisters. And they, they had four bedrooms upstairs and they would put people in there that the doctors had said there's no possible way they're going to live, they're going to die. And they were given 1 Peter 2.24 and Isaiah 53.5 that he was wounded for our transgression by the stripes you are healed, you know. And then, and then Peter, Peter 1 Peter 2.24 um, by his life, she were healed. And he would tell, she would tell them back then that there was no sound, there was no uh, equipment 
to play it on a tape or a, or a CD. They didn't even know what those things were. But she said, I just want you to keep reading this. You can read it all the time you're awake and say it out loud. And she would listen to it and, and say it and, and, uh, and say it and say it. And, and uh, one day they went up there to check on those, on those ladies and the first lady told them, said, uh, I've been saying it, but it, nothing's changed. She said, you keep saying it. And uh, a couple of days went by and that lady met her on the stairs and she was walking down the stairs and she said, did you know that by his stripes I were healed? <laughs> she, she had gone from uh, the impossible to only, only God's possibility. Yep. Okay. So don't eliminate God. Don't cast away your confidence. Yeah. Don't, don't turn away from the scriptures. God's got immortality that no man, no man can even see him at the brightness, uh, the full brightness of who he is. And it's your eternal life. It's what's running around inside of you. That should make you wonder about how great he, he is inside of you and how bright he is inside of you. Okay, now uh, i got to move on. It's important that, that you see the things about God. Jesus Christ has never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he cannot stop being a healer. He cannot stop getting people saved. The work that he did in Calvary is working constantly and continually in the earth. It just needs us to publish. Yeah. It just needs us to be putting it out there. Okay, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession or the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful in promise. Let us consider one another uh, to provoke unto love and the good works. In verse 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together yes. Yes. in the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so, so much the more as you see the day approaching. Well, the day is approaching, isn't it? So don't stop coming to church. There's things that happen just because you come in the building. There's things that happen because somebody you're sitting next to says something to you. There's things that you get out of the message, yeah. But there's other things that happen. And you become part of the church uh, uh, that you've separated yourself from, you know. Um, and then Hebrews 10.35 it says, Cast not away therefore your confidence which is a great recompense of reward. So there's a reward coming for what you're standing in. Amen. There's a lady that was very close to me and helped me a lot of times when I was having bad problems. Some of you knew her, Tiny Masters. Well, a while back she died and she had asked me to do her homecoming. And, uh, and the Lord spoke to me and he said, I've given her a crown of life that would never be taken away from her. And she had fought through cancer. And then she had fought through uh, uh, heart disease. And she couldn't get rid of that heart disease. She wasn't strong enough. And we went up there, two or three of us in here, me and Caroline and Tracy, went up there and, and prayed with her and talked to her. She had to make a couple of decisions. And we liked the way she decided. Uh, but uh, less than six months later, she died and went home to be with the Lord. And that's when the Lord told me, he said, I've given her a crown of life that no one will ever take away from her. Mm -hmm. Why? Because every morning she would go in from 8 to 10 o'clock and you couldn't get her. You couldn't buzz her phone and get her. She said, no, I heard the phone go off, but uh, it's got to wait until after my time with God. And she never got away from the Lord. And she kept going. And she kept activating her faith. And she kept believing the Word. But you know what? Our God means. Yeah. 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 He made the choice that she was coming home.
because he could see the evil that was out there that would be coming against her next. Or he could see something that was going to happen in her family that would just cripple her even more. You know? You hear me? Because he reigns. Yes. And he's the only God that there is, and he's the only right God, and he's the only one that I believe in. His name is Jesus the Christ. And yes, we do have a father. He's the Ancient of Days. And he has put the Holy Spirit on the earth. But they're a threesome, and they work together. Praise God. Now, let me get into this. I'll tell you why I go Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all you that are and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you. Come on, take that yoke. Lord, I take your yoke upon me. I don't want anybody else's. Your yoke opens mine, opens me up, opens my lungs. Your yoke heals me. See, this is healing for the whole man. There's not a part of you that can stay sick. There's not a part of you that can be cursed. Oh yeah, people will try to curse you, but you know what? I repent of, of those people that want to curse me, and, and I just let them go. I just let them go back to God. And you can't do that to me, because I won't walk in the darkness. And if, if Satan is not my master, I can't walk in the darkness. I'm walking in the light. Amen. And this is, this is the light. This is the way for me to get into this life. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And I will give you rest for your souls. Rest for your what? For your soul. Because that's where the activation has got to be. Is in your soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions. That will has got to be submitted unto him. Until you submit that will unto him, you're fighting God. Yeah. My will is not my own. I can't make my own choices. Hmm. Lord, you got choices for me. Show them to me. Yeah. Let me know what you want me to do. Yeah. Yeah. Show me the way I'm supposed to go. I submit yeah. myself to you. I yield unto you. And I want your plans. I want your way. I may not like it, but I want it. And that's where I'm going. Hello. Praise God. All right. And that yoke is easy. We talked about that Friday night. You know, when I got saved, it was easy. It wasn't a burden. It was something God just walked me into. And he became my Savior. Amen. That's when he forgave all my sins. I just didn't know it. It took years for me to find that out. That's when he became grace to me, and I didn't know it. But we're finding out, aren't we? Amen. Yeah. That's when he became my healer. In fact, he's always been a healer. Exodus 15, 26. Go back there. Look at it. He says, I am the Lord that healed thee. He's the Lord. He's the one who has been given authority over us. He's the one who has the power and the anointing to set us free. Amen. And he's the Lord. He's the Lord of lords. He's the King of kings. He's the shepherd and the bishop of my soul. So if my soul is going to have problems, I've got to go take those problems to the Lord and say, Lord, get this out of my soul. Take this out of me. No matter how far back it goes, you change it. Get it out of me. And the Holy Spirit will start talking to you and keep bumping on you and keep bumping on you and keep bumping on you with the same thing that's got to do with your soul. Until you release that thing to him and say, Lord, take this out of me. Help me push into it. Help me. Help me to get it out of me. And then he'll move. And sometimes he'll just wait till you get quiet. To 
some of you don't quiet down until you finally go to sleep. And then he's got to talk while you're sleeping. Uh -huh. A lot of you shaking your head. Okay. Now, let, let's go back with me, if you can. Um, I, want you, I want you to see uh, Exodus 23 or 25. We did Exodus 15, 26. I am the Lord. He's the I am that I am. But I am the Lord. That he can put anything he wants after that. Because yeah. he's the Lord. Yeah. And when you recognize him as the Lord, you bow your knee and you bow your heart. And you bow your brain, you know. Even Kenneth Hagin told us one day, he says, you know, I finally figured out God was smarter than me. You know? <laughs> Amen. You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and water. And I will take sickness from your midst. King James says, I will take sickness away from thee. Sickness. See, see right here, you, you need to be saying Sickness, get out of here. Get out of my body. Sickness, uh, the, the word works, and it's working in me, so get out and stay out from today to have. You need to start talking to it. Because you know you're serving the Lord. Hello? Amen. Yeah. Okay. And he said, he said, if you serve the Lord, he shall bless your bread and your water. Well, how many of you had bread and water today? No. Uh -huh. You had a form of bread, whether it was a cracker or whatever. Or maybe you hadn't eaten yet, but you're going to. And you had some water, I hope. Tell that sickness. Stop, stop ministering to yourself. Tell that sickness to get out of you. Get out of me. You, you don't live in this temple any longer. You can't stay in this temple. You can't affect my brain the way you're trying to. You can't give me any more migraines. You can't have any more headaches in this body. You have to get out. You can't be pain in my knees any longer. Oh, and I like that sometimes, you know. And I get back on the bike and stretch them out again. And, and, and so forth, or exercise somehow or other, or do some squats or something. You know, just to get this old body going. But praise God. Get it, get it out of there. Sickness, get out of me. And label it. Call it my name. God has said you were called blah, 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 so I command you to get out of me in the name of Jesus. And the next time I go back, I'm going to have some healing like I never had before. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, Matthew 8, 17. Thus he fulfilled what was spoken by who? By, by the prophet Isaiah. What did he say? He himself took, in order to carry away our weaknesses and infirmities, and bore away our diseases. King James says he took our sicknesses, took our infirmities and our sicknesses. Infirmities is dealing with a demon. You find an infirmity, a weakness, a lot of times there's a demonic there. Yeah. And you just need to take authority over that and say, get out of me, get out of here, in the name yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And don't come back to this house again. It doesn't belong to you. Amen. And don't send them back in the dry places because that's not where they want to go. <laughs> just tell them to get out of you. Okay. What are you standing on? See, you have the authority of the word. You got the authority of God behind the word. You've got the name of Jesus. 
that cannot lose, cannot fail, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, where? In heaven, in the earth, and under the earth. Yep. In hell. Yep. Okay? So you're not going to fail. You just got to be a little bolder and you've got to access some of this stuff on your own and be, be willing to move it. And tell it, get out of you. Okay? Now, uh, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah. He took, he himself took and carried away from us weaknesses, infirmities, bore away our diseases. So disease or sickness or plagues have no part in you. You can't stay here. I command you, get out of here. Now the doctor may say it's hooked to a heart disease. Well, that don't mean it is. You get out of me anyway. Yeah. Whatever kind of disease you are, yeah. you're not you're not labeling me as part of you, and I'm not labeling you as part of me. Amen. Erase that label. Come on, you got an eraser on that pencil. Yeah. Erase it. Okay. And then Isaiah fifty-three five. He was wounded for our transgression. Okay. Just slip, slip this in there. There's no more transgressions because that's a wound that went to your heart. And Jesus has covered your heart and taken away the transgressions in the new covenant. Amen. So yeah. unless you open your heart to idols and you open your heart to the things that are not even of God, See, and you're going to put somebody in front of God that you can't wound yourself in your heart. That's what that means. That's why it's broken out into different words. They're all sins. But the law had to be formed and spoken to us to stop the transgressions from getting into the people's hearts. But when Jesus fulfilled the law, now there's no more transgressions. Yeah, you all think about that. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. Now you can still commit iniquities. You've got a mouth and you can talk. And you can destroy yourself with your own mouth. I was doing it. God had to teach me. Shut up. Stop saying those things about yourself. Okay, just because somebody else said it about you doesn't mean they were true. That's right. Hmm. And then we get in this rut where, well, I can't ever do anything right. Oh, can't ever do anything right? No. You're the most valuable thing that God has made. You can do a lot of things correctly. Amen. I said to you the most valuable thing that God has made. Amen. Amen. Adam may have named all the other animals, but it was after God made him and put value in Adam. And then the tenth percent of Adam went into the woman, and God put the other ninety percent into the woman. Hello. I think that was Adam's first time. That's a person. That's me. I don't think he had to wait to get in the garden. I think God just put him to sleep and took that rib out of him and said, Thank you for the time. <laughs> I'll do the rest of it, Adam. You just rest a while. I'm going to be on you to labor and favor later now and give you rest. Let me do my part now. Hmm. He did his part pretty well, didn't he? Amen. He was wounded. He was bruised. Uh, uh, and the chastisement that was the punishment that was put on Jesus at Calvary, the punishment that was put on him by the soldiers, the punishment that was put on him to be whipped, the punishment that was put on him to have nails put in his hands and in his feet, the punishment even of sticking that spear in his side to make sure that blood and water came out. God wanted it to be blood and water because it's proved that he was dead. Hello? Yep. But it was punishment. It was your 
punishment, but he took it. Yeah, I better take my phone. Yeah, take my keys. Who's got my keys in my phone? I don't have them anymore. Why are you carrying things around that Jesus Ooh. took for you? Can you see the reality of it now? If he took it, it belongs to him. It doesn't belong to you anymore. Now, why do you want to go back and borrow it if it's of the darkness? Because Satan comes as an angel of light and he starts telling you things and then you've got to go back to the doctor because you're not feeling too well and, and you know you just have this problem with, it, with that side of your head. And you know, you, you, your feet just hurt you all the time. And, uh, it belongs to Jesus, it don't belong to you. Amen? Amen. All right. So, see, th those two actually group themselves together Isaiah 53 5, Matthew 8 17. Because he had to fulfill what was spoken by Isaiah. And Isaiah 53, 5 is telling you what was spoken by Isaiah. Hello? Okay. But Jesus took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. He took our diseases. He took the plagues. He took the, the viruses. He took the flu. I had a flu in 1975. And I let Linda out of the car. And she went up ahead of me. And I just stood there by the, by the old car we were driving. And we were going into Byron Kutuk's house. And, and I let her get ahead of me. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get off of me! That thing just left like, just like that. And I knew I had authority over that side. Yep. And they come around asking you, don't you want your food shot? No. no. Don't need it. No. See, if it belongs to him, why are we taking it? If demons belong to him, why are we allowing them to come back into us? And all they're trying to do is get the house back. All right, now, uh, Isaiah 10, 38. I may stay here now, but I want you to get this. How God, who's God? Ancient of days, Abba Father. How God did what? Anointed his son. It says, Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Teresa of Warner Robins. How God anointed Shelby of Senator. Who who did who brought the anointing that's in your life? God did. You can talk about your sickness, or you can talk about how God is healing you and using your anointing and bringing about your healing body. You know, I shared Friday night about how it took six months to get rid of epileptic migraine seizures. And I went through three of those seizures with no medication whatsoever after 13 and a half years. And the first one took me overnight. The second one took me about six hours to get rid of it. The third one took me five minutes to get rid of it and then never come back. And God shut the door to those things. And Satan would try to bring back those, those, the blinding of my eyes or, or just something. And I said, no, you can't get back in this house. No. No, I'm not. Because this, this is not allowed. And the Holy Spirit told me, he shut the door so you can't open the door again. No. In the name of Amen. Jesus. You see?
See my answer to him? Especially when you're, when you're, you know, uh, we had a lady one time when we were at her Olympus house in Massachusetts, and I had just spoken to the church, and we were going to play volleyball or something, uh, the ball, to, I think it was volleyball, and uh, this lady said, I, I can't play because I'm getting migraine headache. I said, no, we don't do that. And I just put my hands on her automatically, and I said, in the name of Jesus, this thing's got to go. And just like that, it was gone. And you know what her comments were while we were playing volleyball? She said, I can't believe that thing just left that fast. Listen, listen to what she said. I can't believe that thing just left that fast. You're anointed by Almighty God. It's not an anointing that you just grew into. It's something that God put in there when he put Jesus in you. The same anointing that raised him from the dead is in you. When are you going to use it? Move those things. Make them go. Tell that devil. Well, I just thought it was part of me getting old. <laughs> Moses didn't start till he was 80. Mm. Most of you have not even touched 80. I had a guy come to my house who's in his 50s, and he said, I'm getting old. I said, what? No. Say that again, what? Oh, how God anointed, Acts 10, 38. Come on, I want you to see. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. That's what your anointing is. It's the Holy Spirit and power. And God has put it in your life. Yes. Thank you, man. Well, I don't know if I have the Holy Spirit or not. You're born again? Are you born again, Rodney? Yeah. Yeah, you got the Holy Spirit and power. Spend some time in prayer and you'll have some more Holy Spirit and power. Yeah. By the way, Wednesday night has changed in this church. We're not preaching anymore, we're just praying. Amen. From 6 o'clock until 7.30. Holy Spirit and power. Who went about doing good. And that's the goodness of God. So Jesus had the goodness of God as fruit in his life and, and as part of the fruit of the vine that's in your life is the goodness of God. Yeah. Yes. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, etc., etc. Alright? So see, see what God's, God's showing us here in one scripture. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Who brought the oppression? The devil. Who brought the oppression? The devil. Who brought the knee problem? Who brought the ear plugging up? The devil. Who brought the eyes not seeing right? Who brought the fingers crumbling up? And, and right in front of your face, and they're, they're crumbling up, and they're getting harder to lose. <coughs> You just allow it? No, no, no. You know, only God can put everything about the devil in one word. Because you take the D off and you've got evil. Yeah. You put the D on there and you've got the devil. And the devil's the one that's evil. Yeah. He's got it all in one word. Yeah. I've got it, huh? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Well, is God with you? Yes. So how much longer are you going to go before you let him move inside of you and, and change your heart if necessary? Because some of these things are affecting your heart sometimes and you've got to be healed in your heart. Yep. Which tells me the fullness of your salvation is not working so it is not healing for the whole man. Wow, that went on the way. Yep. <laughs> yep. Now, I got one more. Uh, I got two more, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the 
the, the last group, I grouped them together, and I, I was just missing one. But I want to put First Peter 2.24 in front of this other one. That's why I'm doing it backwards. Who, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, we live Friday night too, weren't we? We're dead to sins. King James says we're dead to sins. This is the new King James. It says we have died to sin, but it's still in that scripture. It's still there. I'm dead to sins, so why would I let sickness stay in my body? I don't care what they want to call it. It's got to leave. It's got to come out of my prostrate. It's got to come out of my back. It's got to come out of my liver. Come on. Amen. When, when Catherine was here, God gave her a new liver. Yep. Less than six months later, God gave seven out of ten people that we know of uh, a new liver or healing in their liver in Russia. God gave 15 people, 13 out of 15 people, back trouble for at least two years was gone. First Peter 2, 24 and 25. Why did I put 25 on there? Because now you have returned to the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. If your soul is where the problem is, Jesus is right there with it. Because he's looking at your soul. He has taken the job of being the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. Yep. And he wants to help you change your soul and get rid of the things that are not of God. Yep. They're not equal to your anointing. They're fighting against you. And that's why they're there. Just to displease God and to move you away from God. To, to, to make you walk away from the Lord. Well, you won't ever get better. He ain't never going to heal you. Why do why you want to praise Him Serve him. Uh, I mean, he don't care about you. Look, that thing should have been gone by now if, if Jesus died for you. Lord, Lord, Lord. You ain't never seen the word work before. Why should it work this time? He told me that one when I was this young in the Lord. The Lord had already prepared me. He said, if I can save you, don't you think I can heal you? You ever stopped and looked at your body? If, if you made this thing and you made it work and you make my heart beat how many times a day does it beat? I don't know. But it's, it's doing a pretty good job and it's staying around 25 and over 60 or 70. That ain't bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, you can be honest back there shaking his head. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to see out of, out of Peter? First Peter 2.24, by whose stripes you were healed. Well, this goes back a long way, but Isaiah said you are healed. Peter says you were healed. Somewhere in there, you should be healed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. Now, I'm not turning away from the doctor's technology. I'm going to find out what he's got to say. But when I come home, what he's got to say has got to compare to these words. And, you know, if, if, if you need to listen to these scriptures, that's not hard for us to do. Most of them are on those cards at home. But how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, his anointing is good. His anointing is your anointing, and your anointing is good. It comes from the goodness of Almighty God, and he's laid out that goodness for you the same way, the same way you lay out money in a bank account. Hello. Yep. You got a savings account? Anybody? Yep. You put 
some money in there, a dollar a week, five dollars a week, ten dollars a week, twenty dollars a week. You got the money to do it if you just started. That's what God told me too, because I didn't think I had any money. I said, God, I don't think I had any money to put in the savings account. He said, start a savings account. Yes, sir. Put that ten dollar bill in there. Put that twenty in there. Put twenty five in there. Hey, you got an extra fifty, put it in there. Next thing you know, I had a thousand dollars in there. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's going to make you do it, whether you want to or not. Because he's going to show you how to save. And as long as you're a tither, he wants you to give to yourself. Yep. to see one thing about this scripture. It's for your spirit, it's for your soul, it's for your body. It's in the Bible and Paul wrote it. Or Paul had it written. Or the Holy Spirit wrote it. However you want to say it. But it's in there. First Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. Now, May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 24. He who calls you is faithful who also will do it. Who calls you? Our the Father called you. When he called me that morning at 5 o'clock, I heard my real name, Felix, so loud that if I screamed as loud as I could, that wouldn't be as loud as I heard it. And I sat up in the bed and let her lay there sound asleep. I said, how did she not hear that? But it was for me. It was for me, it wasn't for her. She already answered her call. It was for me. Hello? And God's got a call for you. This healing is part of that call. Whoever you are. In, in Mark chapter 16, it says, You will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Whatever the problem is, is recoverable. Amen. Because Jesus has become the shepherd, the bishop, watching over your soul. And he's going to be in their soul to make them whole. If you just tell them that, whether they think they got anything or not. Yeah. Mm. See, we've got to publish this. And publish it in a way that, that this is God's miracle for you. This is miraculous healing that God has for you. It's the sense of God to put his stuff in you. And it's not no fail. No, no. Now, what God's been doing here, he's been doing it by fire. So I want you to stand up with me. And I'm going to pray over you right where you are. Then, if you want prayer, you can still come up here. Okay. Did you notice your back is straighter than it was before? Yes. It is. It's getting more straight every day. That's true. It's coming. Yeah, I know. Thank you, God. Yes. One Wednesday night, God told me, he says, you pray for her. And you pray for the miracle in her in her back. Yep. And and uh, she didn't get it all instantaneously, but she got it. Yep. And she still gets it. Amen. And God is healing her spine. Yes. Yes. 
and bringing her back to however tall she's going to be when it's all straight. Okay. Now, who, who's the other lady who's been over? Uh, Linda Smith that was here last night. You're going to, you're going to see her straighten out. Amen. Now, sometimes people say, oh, yeah, well, what if it doesn't happen? Well, you know, if, if, she's, if she's full of doubt and unbelief so much, what I don't think she is, then it probably won't happen. Uh, I want you to hear this, okay? I want you to hear me say this. There's a man was sitting on this side, and I walked up to him and I told him, I said, God's going to see to it that your prosperity is greater than you have ever been before. And you're going to have lots of money. And he looked at me and he said, that'll never happen. Oh. Yeah. I said, you're exactly right. <laughs> Did you cancel what God had said? No. Yeah. Shot it all down. And God trying to put something in for him to think about, for him to go back to the Word and find out that God said, I'm the one that will give you prosperity. David said, send prosperity now. Yeah. Okay. I'll take his. <laughs> he didn't want it. I couldn't believe he said that. He said, that'll never happen. Same fellow told me a while back, he said, there's no such thing as a rapture.
Spend those 15 minute time cycles with me and pray in the Spirit the way I taught you to. Because I want to empower you for greater things, says the Spirit of God. I am loosing my power on my church. I am loosing my power on my church. You are my church. You are the ones that must move in the power of Almighty God. Not be afraid of it, but take it. I'll teach you how to use it. I'll teach you how to use it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I want you to take a minute and I want you just to receive. I want you just to receive. There you go. There you go. Come on. Open your heart and receive. Clear out your lungs. Take a deep breath. And breathe in the Spirit of God. Breath of God. Fall on me. Heaven come down. Heaven come down. I break the curse of sickness and disease and death and destruction and poverty and lack off of you in the name of Jesus. Sin and the counselor of sin are driven out of you and the angel of light has to take off and get out of this church in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that lives here and abides here and rests upon this church and the people that come through the doors of this church. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for your mind to be totally clear as of today. In the name of Jesus. More and more and more, says the Spirit of God. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. Honor and grace to God Almighty. He is ever in charge of us. He is ever our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, O Lord. Hallowed be thy name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Play my song back there, would you? Play that song for me. <laughs>